deep underground in an undisclosed location, Trent Comics presents Masters of the Universe, the motion picture. Masters of the Universe, also known as Masters of the Universe, the motion picture, is a 1987 American science fantasy action film directed by newcomer Gary Goddard, produced by Joran Golvis and Miam Golan. It was written by David Odell. The film stars Dolph Lundgren, Frank Langeli, John Cipher, Chelsea Field, Billy Barty, Courtney Cox, Robert Duncan McNeil, and Meg Foster. It is based on the Mattel toy line of the same name, which brings the story of two teenagers who meets the mighty warrior He-Man, who has arrived on Earth from planet Eternia, and now goes on a mission to save the universe from the villainous Skeletor, his evil nemesis. Masters of the Universe was released theatrically in the United States on August 7th, 1987. It was a critical and commercial failure, grossing $17 million worldwide against a budget of $22 million. However, it is now regarded as a classic cult film. One of the original drafts from the script by David O'Dell, whose previous writing credits included Supergirl and The Dark Crystal, was reviewed in the third episode of the He-Man and She-Ra podcast, Master's Cast. The original draft included more time spent on Eternia and Snake Mountain, had Beastman in a speaking role, and even revealed that He-Man's mother was originally from Earth, as per the character Queen Marlena from the Filmation animated series He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, thus linking the two planets. Describing her character, Meg Foster said that Evil Lynn is not villainous. Quote, unquote, she is just doing her job and she knows how to get results, even if that's being harsh. Langella agreed, calling Evil Lynn a female more dedicated to Skeletor's cause than any man. She is obsessed around Skeletor because she is slightly lovelorn. The filmmakers considered having Foster wear contact lenses to mask her naturally pale blue eyes, but decided that her natural eyes fit the character better. However, they did augment Foster's chest, fitting cleavage into the character's costume. Foster wanted the character to have a larger hairstyle, rather than the short style featured in the film. When offered the role, Langella said that he didn't even blink. I couldn't wait to play him. Langella cited his then four-year-old son's love of Skeletor while running around his house yelling He-Man's battle cry, I have the power! as his main reason he chose to play He-Man's arch nemesis. On the planet Eternia, at the center of the universe, Skeletor's army seizes Castle Grayskull, scattering the remaining Eternian defenders, and captures the sorceress of Grayskull, planning to add her power to his own by the next moonrise. Skeletor's archenemy, the warrior He-Man, veteran soldier Man-at-Arms, and his daughter Tila rescue Windor from Skeletor's forces. Wildor, a Theorian locksmith, reveals that Skeletor has acquired his invention, a cosmic key that can open a portal to anywhere, utilizing sound keys. The device was stolen by Skeletor's second-in-command, Evelyn, allowing Skeletor to breach Castle's Grayskull. With Wildor's remaining prototype of the key in hand, He-Man and his friends travel to the castle. They attempt to free the sorceress, but are overwhelmed by Skeletor's army and forced to flee through Wildor's hastily open portal, arriving them on Earth. 
the key is misplaced on their arrival and is discovered by two New Jersey teenagers. Orphaned high school girl Julie Winston and her boyfriend Kevin Corgan. While experimenting with the device, they accidentally send a signal that allows Evelyn to track it. She then sends her henchmen, Sorod, Blade, Beastman, and Cog to recover it. Kevin, an aspiring musician, mistakes the key for a synthesizer and takes it to a music store run by his friend Charlie. Cog's team arrives and chases Julie until He-Man rescues her. Cog's team returns to Grayskull where, incensed by their failure, Skeletor kills Sarod and sends the others back to Earth. With a larger force under Evelyn's command, unable to find Julie, Kevin is taken to Julie's house by Lubick, a de detective investigating the disturbance created by Cog's team. Suspecting the key is stolen, Lubick confiscates it from Kevin and leaves. Immediately afterwards, Evelyn captures and interrogates Kevin for the key's location with a mind control collar before pursuing Lubick. Julie and the Eternians release Kevin from the collar before they go after Lubick and the key. They arrive at Charlie's store, but Skeletor's forces catch up with them, and in a pitched battle ensues. Evelyn discovers that the key and summons Skeletor to Earth. Skeletor's forces capture the Eternians, and Julie is mortally wounded by Skeletor's lightning blast, which simultaneously erases the memory storage of Wildor's key. He-Man surrenders to save his comrades and is returned to Eternia as Skeletor's slave. Skeletor demands that He-Man kneel before him for all of Eternia to witness before he is killed. He-Man refuses and is lashed by Blade's laser whip in an attempt to make him submit. He-Man is still standing when the moon rises and Skeletor absorbs the powers of the universe. Declaring himself the master of the universe, Skeletor asserts his victory and continues to torture He-Man with energy blasts. Back on Earth, Wildor repairs the cosmic key and Kevin recreates the tone necessary to create a gateway to Eternia. The group, including Lubick, who attempts to arrest them, are transported to Castle Grayskull, where they begin battling Skeletor's forces. Resenting that Skeletor absorbed the powers of the universe without sharing it with her, Evelyn deserts him along with the other henchmen. Skeletor accidentally frees He-Man, who reclaims the Sword of Grayskull, and they battle until He-Man shatters Skeletor's staff removing his new powers and restoring him to his normal state. He-Man offers mercy, but Skeletor draws a concealed sword and attempts to kill He-Man. He-Man knocks Skeletor into a vast pit below. The freed sorceress heals Julie and the portal is open and sent the Earthlings home. Hailed as a hero for his bravery, Lubick decides to remain. On Eternia. Julie awakens on the morning of her parents' death by plane crash. She prevents them from taking the ill-fated flight by taking their keys and runs outside to find Kevin. Kevin confirms that their experiences were real, producing a souvenir from Eternia, a small blue sphere containing a scene of He-Man in front of Castle Grayskull with his sword raised above his head. In a post credit scene, Skeletor's head emerges from the water at the bottom of the pit, saying, I'll be back. The commercial failure for Masters of the Universe, along with other films such as Superman IV, The Quest for Peace, and Life Force, contributed to the eventual closure of canon films. Canon Films had intended to create a Masters of the Universe sequel, indicated by the end credits, with a reveal that Skeletor survives his fall. 
the sequel titled Masters of the Universe 2, Cyborg, was written and followed He-Man, who returns to Earth to battle Skeletor, who has left Earth as a post-apocalyptic wasteland, and the film was to feature Trapjaw and she -Ra. Pro surfer Lord Hamilton was originally to replace Dolph Lundgren as He-Man, and the only aspect known about the sequel's screenplay was that He-Man would have returned to Earth and would be disguised as a professional quarterback. With a low budget of $4.5 the sequel was to be directed by Albert Pun, consecutively with the aborted Spider-Man movie. The project was abandoned when Cannon would not pay Mattel's fees. The production instead utilized the already made costumes and set for the low budget sci-fi film, Cyborg. Masters of the Universe was Dolph Lundgren's first leading role in a feature film following his success in Rocky IV and would later label it as one of his least favorite film roles. Conversely, Langella's considered playing Skeletor to be one of his favorite roles of all time.